Hi, welcome and thanks for joining us for this overview of Lumension's compliance and IT risk management solutions. In today's heavily regulated business climate, companies are spending more than ever to be compliant with key industry mandates and regulations. And why is this happening? In many cases, companies are treating individual regulations and their compliance processes around them as individual siloed processes within the organization. In addition, controls are often redundant and overlapping in between individual regulations, resulting in a lot of rework and duplicated efforts. Reporting processes are often still based on manual and ad hoc data collection and still managed through the use of spreadsheets. And finally, when all else fails, companies tend to bring in very expensive third-party consultants to help supplement their own workforce when the workload gets to be too much. In one recent study, it was found that companies, on average, are spending between 30 and 50 percent more to comply with these regulations than they really need to. Why is that happening? Well, it turns out that without a centralized, streamlined, automated process for compliance and IT risk management, companies simply lack the ability to proactively identify IT risks and compliance gaps and address the things they need to do to reduce business risk. By automating these compliance and IT risk assessment efforts, harmonizing your controls into a consistent framework, and prioritizing your remediation efforts based on what has the most risk improvement benefit to your business, Lumension can help you minimize your regulatory headaches, streamline your audit workflows, and reduce your overall total cost of compliance. So let's take a look at a solution summary of how Lumension Risk Manager can help you solve your audit workflow challenges. In this diagram, we see how Lumension's compliance and IT risk management solution allows organizations to continuously identify their critical IT resources and key compliance controls assess their technical, physical, and administrative controls, remediate and prioritize their compliance initiatives, and manage their overall IT risk compliance and reporting process. Now I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about each one of these four areas of that overall solution process. I'd like to introduce you to each one of these solution areas and then show you in the Lumension Risk Manager product how we can help you address those challenges. Really the first step in embarking on an IT risk and compliance management effort is identifying everything that's in your environment. You need to have very broad visibility into the applications, databases, servers, networks, and facilities that support your key business interests. That's the processes and information that your business really cares about at the end of the day. The Lamention Risk Manager repository allows you to identify each one of these IT resources and associate them to the key business operations that they support. The product then assists you in developing a unique IT risk profile for each one of those resources. That risk profile is then used to index into our knowledge base to help you identify the risk scenarios you should be concerned about, as well as the controls you should have in place to help mitigate what those risks are. So let's take a look at how this actually manifests itself in the Lumension Risk Manager product. One of the biggest challenges in doing compliance by spreadsheet and relying on ad hoc manual processes for data collection is you really lack the visibility you need to make good decisions based on risk and compliance information. With Lumension Risk Manager, we give you the ability to create a very robust model that captures your entire environment and allows you to get the visibility you need into that data. So let's take a look at what that model looks like. And to begin, we're going to start by creating what we call a business interest. Business interests are the key pieces of information and business processes that matter to the organization. As you can see here, we organize those into groups based on how our company is structured. So I'm going to add a new business interest here in the marketing and sales group. We're going to call it customer information. We're going to give it a type. We'll say that it's information. We'll set its owner and give it an initial criticality rating. Hit save and that's going to create that business interest object in the system for us. So really what we want to be able to do from a risk perspective is find out where customer information, this business interest, lives in the environment and where it might be exposed to risk and then determine what we need to do from a controls perspective to mitigate that risk. And to do that we're going to go over to the framework area. We're going to start by taking a look at subjects. When you take a look at something like risk to business information, you have to look at that information everywhere it lives, not just in IP addressable devices. So you need to be able to look at applications, databases, facilities, networks, etc. We refer to all those things as subjects inside of Lumension Risk Manager. 
And as you can see by what's on the screen here, you can look at, you can treat subjects from a very broad perspective and use all of those different types of resources. Now, what I want to be able to do here is create a new application. So I'm going to say add subject in the applications folder. Create a new application, we'll call it Customer App Pro. We're going to give it a default criticality level, that will change over time. And we're going to set a default owner here. I'm going to set myself as the owner. We'll say that it's an application resource type. So that's really all the information we need to create the subject initially. But we want to be able to do two additional things with it so that we can have a much more robust picture of what needs to happen in that application uh, from a compliance and risk perspective. The first thing we do is build a unique risk profile for that application. So I'll expand the risk profile section. We'll take a look at that. Inside of Lumension Risk Manager, you build that risk profile by asserting individual attributes, each one of which tells us just a little bit of information about that application. So for example, here we'll say that the application architecture is a web app. We'll say that it was developed in-house and that from an exposure standpoint, it faces the outside world. As you can see, there's more attributes there that we could take a look at. And in fact, that list of attributes can be expanded to model any unique situations in your particular environment. But this will suffice for now for this demo. So now that I've asserted my risk profile characteristics, I want to go in and look at business interests. I want to set which business interests, that information and process, um, actually apply to this application. So in this case, I'm going to say that this application contains customer information so that we know now there's a relationship between that. Um, and really what this relationship tells us is that if there's a security breach on that application, it could potentially affect the security, the confidentiality of that customer information. So having set that information then, I'll save and that's going to create the subject in the system. Now pretty simply, we talked before about correlating that business interest to it and uh, that's, you can see that that's here and that tells us again what type of business information is at risk if that application is compromised. But we also set the risk profile before, so just to review, here's what those risk profile attributes were. Now Lumention Risk Manager takes those risk profile attributes and indexes them into our risk knowledge base so that we can do some automated analysis for you. The first thing we do is we look into our library of threat scenarios and we look at what are the potential risks that this application is actually exposed to. And based on what we found out here, this application is at an elevated exposure to unauthorized system access, most likely because it's internet facing. And it's also at a, an elevated risk of denial of service, again, probably because it's internet facing. So what you can see here is that as we take that risk profile and take a look at the types of risk scenarios we're exposed to, Lumension Risk Manager is giving you an automated output of that. So it saves a lot of time and improves accuracy when you're going through these traditional tabletop risk assessment exercises. Now in addition to telling you what risk scenarios we're exposed to, the Risk Intelligence Engine indexes that profile into the knowledge base and can prescribe the specific technical, physical, and administrative controls that are required not only to mitigate the risks we identified, but also to establish compliance with any mandates and regulations that this particular application is exposed to. So as you can see here, we've identified 70 key controls that need to be implemented on this application. Those controls were automatically mapped from our controls library based on the risk profile. Each one of these controls then is cross-referenced out to individual external reference documents. These are your own security policies, industry standards, and best practice guidelines as well as the regulatory requirements that you're beholden to. So in a very simple example here, we can see that the control of changing vendor supplied defaults is cross-referenced out to both PCI and ISO. This cross-referencing enables what we call harmonizing of controls. Rather than having to deal with multiple copies of essentially the same control concept that you've gotten from different compliance requirements, by harmonizing these controls, we're eliminating the overlap, defining a single control that captures that concept. And by using those cross-references, we're able to assess our performance with that control once and use that assessment result to demonstrate our compliance score with multiple external regulations. The compliance content and controls content that we have uh, consists of uh, approximately 2,500 discrete control activities that are cross-referenced to over 400 individual reference documents. Now we leverage a content provider known as the Unified Compliance Framework for that. That provides us with a trusted third party that has established a level of credibility on the quality of that particular controls content. 
So let's take a step back and review kind of where we are here. We defined a business interest, this customer information, identified a business application that stores that type of information on it. We went through a brief risk profile assessment on that particular application, and that told us the types of risk scenarios we need to be concerned about. Any one of those risk scenarios, if it came true on that application, could expose that business interest to compromise. We also took a look at how Lumension's risk intelligence engine automatically prescribed for us the key controls that we need to implement, both to mitigate risk and to satisfy compliance with those external mandates. So now that we've set the stage for what our compliance posture should look like, the next thing we'll do is flow into an assessment phase where we'll actually go and test our environment to determine whether those controls have actually been implemented the way we say they need to be. So as you move into the assessment phase, Lumention Risk Manager provides you with a single integrated view of your technical, physical, and procedural controls. This allows you to immediately determine where you have deficiencies in both your compliance and risk posture. So where does that assessment data come from? Well, in Lumention Risk Manager, you can get it from two places. You can automatically import technical security posture data from Lumention's vulnerability scan and patch management products, as well as third-party vulnerability management applications as well. When you import this data in there, it automatically updates your risk score inside the Lumention Risk Manager framework. Now for the controls that don't really lend themselves to being automatically scanned on the network, Lumention Risk Manager provides a simple, easy to use web-based survey mechanism that allows you to send multiple choice questions to system owners so they can attest for themselves how well they're implementing key procedural and physical controls on the assets that they control. So let's now take a look at how that assessment component works inside of the Lumention Risk Manager product. So one of the challenges with traditional manual risk and compliance assessment processes is that it really requires organizations to pull a lot of data from disparate sources. They're pulling reports out of security systems, they're having to go uh, take spreadsheets and uh, checklists around and talk to people and ask questions. And so trying to pull all that information together into one place is a really hard thing to do. As a result, it impacts your visibility and it takes entirely too much of your time to try to collect good quality information. So in this example here in the demo, we're going to take a look at how we've automatically imported patch management data to update some of our compliance scores. So we're going to browse into our servers section here. Now I've configured a plugin in here that shows us, um, that allows us to go pull information from Lumension's patch and remediation product and it's pulling information in and it's automatically processing that data to do two things. First, it's importing those assets that it identified so those automatically get become part of the subject repository inside of Lumension Risk Manager. And we can take a look at that here. Now I happen to know that uh, when we did that import, all of those systems had the word device in the name. So I'll filter my subjects for that and I can see here that I've automatically imported 20 devices from the patch and remediation product. Now, I want to look for a specific one that I happen to know has uh, interesting uh, compliance data associated with it. So I'll filter and search for that one. Now I'm going to pull up this specific device. Now, after Lumension Risk Manager's connector imported the asset itself, it then ran through a scoring process in which we pulled data out of the patch management product that's able to tell us information about how well key controls have been implemented. So, for example, we're able to look at the patch information itself and we're able to assert that, in fact, this particular device is up to date on all of its critical patches. So this was automatically asserted with a passing score and the observation was updated to document what we actually observed in the patch management system that allowed us to assert that passing score. Now, Lumension's patch management product also is able to give us a detailed software inventory about what applications have been installed on that endpoint. And what we do is we look into that and we search for all known antivirus products. And in this case, we're able to determine that there's actually no antivirus installed on this particular device. So as a result of the work that connector did, it automatically asserted this failing score and gave us the uh, documented details there in the observation. So that shows us how we can use connectors both to Lumension products as well as third-party security products to programmatically update control scores throughout the framework. Now the second thing we do is for those controls that don't really lend themselves to that kind of connector-based automation, it's typically going to be your procedural and physical controls, we use an assessment workflow for that. So in the assessments here, 
What I'm going to do is create a new controls assessment. I'll just add an assessment here. And we'll say we're going to do an assessment on that customer application. I can give it an optional description and a due date for when I expect to have that assessment data completed. Now I'll go into the details tab here and you'll notice it's empty. What I need to do is go put things in scope for this particular assessment. Now what scope allows you to do is take a larger environment and carve it up into smaller, more consumable chunks of assessment work. So I want to go look here inside of my applications. I'm going to drill down here and find this customer app pro that we just created. Now I have the option to either select individual groups of controls to be in scope or I can select all applicable controls for that specific subject. In this case I'm going to select all applicable controls and I'll click add. Now the system goes to work and you remember before when we created that subject it told us that there were 70 key controls that were uh, applicable for it. Uh, as you can see here all 70 of those controls have now been put in scope. So what do I do with them from here? Well I've got a couple of options. Uh, the key thing that I want to be able to do is send surveys out to individuals in my uh, corporation. So I might select a handful of controls here, we'll just pick the first couple, and go create a survey. And it's very simple, all I have to do is select the name of the person that's going to receive that survey and hit submit. Lumension Risk Manager's controls data model automatically generates the questions that need to be asked of that person to satisfy uh, the assertion on whether that control has actually been implemented. Now that person's going to get an email with a, a URL link that they can click through, log into the system, and go take their surveys. And this is the view we're going to look at here that they would see when they log in. So they'll click through to the individual assessment and they'll look at um, what specific questions uh, that they've got. So if I click through one of these specific applications, I'm going to get a question and a, multiple, a set of multiple choice options where I can say yes, we've uh, implemented this control satisfactorily, or no, we haven't. I've got the option to give details that would explain my answer. That goes to the observation. And I've also got the option to include an attachment. Now attachments are a very powerful component inside of Lumension Risk Manager. At some level, the compliance and risk assessment process becomes about information management. You need to capture all kinds of screenshots and reports and little snippets of information that serve as evidence to prove that you've implemented the control the way you say you have. This is particularly important when you need to demonstrate compliance with these controls to an outside auditor. You want to make sure you've got that documented evidence associated with those self-attested scores. So the attachment mechanism allows you to do that. You can upload any kind of file as an attachment to serve as that evidence. And in situations when you have policies and procedures that live in an external document repository and you want to incorporate those as evidence, you can simply attach those as a link and you don't have to upload additional copies of the document. Now as users walk through and they respond to these questions and they take their surveys, as the person responsible for orchestrating this assessment process, I'm going to see those results show up right here on my screen. Now what I want to do, since this is a brand new fresh assessment, we don't have any real data in there. I want to flip back over to an assessment that we've already um, staged some work on so that you can kind of see what that looks like after it's gone through the process. So this particular assessment, we've added some items into scope. And if we go over here and look at the details, we can drill down into any one of the applications that's actually in scope and look at what type of scoring information is getting updated. And this is really mission control for me orchestrating this assessment. I can look at survey results as they come back in. I've got workflow tools around rejecting and approving responses. I can send them back and delegate them out to new people if I need to get additional information. Um, so a lot of tools under the hood there that really simplify the process that I go through in trying to collect that information. And then finally, at the end of the day, once I'm satisfied that all the information is complete and accurate, I commit the assessment results, and that goes in and updates all of the associated risk and compliance scores that are tied to those individual control scores. So once you've gone through the identify and assess phase, you're ready to move into remediation. You've identified the gaps that you have, and it's time to look at figuring out what you need to do to remediate some of those gaps to improve your scores. Lumension Risk Manager helps you prioritize which of those gaps that, if remediated, would have the biggest impact on your overall compliance and risk management scores. You can then repair critical software vulnerabilities and security configurations to implement technical control requirements using Lumension's security solutions. 
So let's take a look then at the Lamention Risk Manager product and see how you can use the remediation capability to help you prioritize your security and risk remediation efforts. So one of the biggest challenges as companies move into the remediation phase of their compliance projects is really understanding what they should go fix first. Virtually everybody has gaps, but typically those gaps are represented as a laundry list of things to fix. And with Lumention Risk Manager, we help you solve that problem by prioritizing those gaps in terms of which ones you should fix to get the biggest improvement in your overall compliance and risk posture. So let's take a look at how that works in the product here. If we go to the remediation tab here, um, the way we represent this is as a series of projects. Each project represents some discrete set of control gaps that we're going to go remediate, either by upgrading software, implementing new technology, or simply fixing broken processes and procedures. Really anything is fair game for a remediation project inside of LRM. So we define a remediation project, and in this case we've defined one called Application Access Controls. And inside of that project, we've identified a number of controls across a number of subjects that we're going to actually remediate. So we're going to go implement stronger access controls to fix that control deficiency across all these individual subjects. We mentioned Risk Manager then takes a look at those and says, okay, if those control deficiencies were remediated and brought up to a passing level, how much would that impact my overall compliance posture? How much would that impact my overall risk score? And we provide that what-if analysis to you right here inside the product. So for example, I can look over here from a pure operational security perspective, implementing this project is going to bring my scores up in a lot of areas. However, if I look at that through the lens of compliance, I find that it's really not as big of an impact for me. Uh, for example, if I look here, it's going to move the needle here, this green spot on the uh, charts here, it's only going to move the needle a little bit on my ISO and PCI compliance. So this allows me to start doing some scenario playing and taking a look at different remediation projects and trying to determine which one of these is going to be really the best return on the work I'm going to put into remediating my security gaps. Now I can also bring up one of these projects and I can assign it to an owner so that I can define um, you know, who needs to be actually responsible for this project. Uh, and then I can set it as a status. So once I put it into an in-progress status, I know that that project is being done and that I need to track what's going on with uh, the activities related to it. And so really the last step as you look at the overall solution flow is to take control and really manage your process through better visibility and reports. Lumention Risk Manager provides enhanced visibility into your security and compliance posture with over 30 customizable dashboards and reports. You can quickly generate high-level dashboard summaries and easily export in-depth compliance reports in multiple formats. You can also create custom role-based views into the dashboard and audit reports for folks like your auditors, your executive management, even your IT operations people that need to see where they have gaps that they need to remediate. So let's take a look now at Lumention Risk Manager's dashboard and reporting capabilities and show you how that looks. So here we are in Lumention Risk Manager product and we're starting here at the dashboard. The dashboard gives you a lot of different views into all of the data that you have composed into your IT compliance and risk management model. So for example, we talked before about business interests and how we organize those into business groups to get a true risk view. Uh, and here in the, this uh, upper right hand corner chart, you see the overall risk score for each one of those business groups is depicted in the chart. I can drill down into any one of those and take a look at what's the overall score for any specific business interest within that group. I can look at the trend for that group over time, some grade distribution, and then finally here in findings we apply some heuristics to all the failing scores that affect these business interests and try to sift out some patterns for you. For example, we know that security and IT management controls are failing in many areas and we're able to look at that as a very consistent pattern across all of those different business interests and help you identify maybe some areas where you should focus some energy. Now I've gone back here to the home page to take a look then at a compliance view. So at a very high level here on my home page, I can look at what my overall compliance score is with various regulations such as GOBA, HIPAA, ISO, and I'll drill down in here to PCI. So for PCI compliance, we break it down here into the 12 high level uh, requirements that are part of the PCI mandate. And I can look at how I'm doing in each one of those sections. I can also break that down by resource type so I understand you know, which parts of my environment are actually contributing the most to my compliance failures. Are my applications, databases, 
networks, et cetera, which ones are contributing the most to those subpar compliance scores. Now I can take the compliance view and drill all the way down into a very detailed view of that specific regulation. And we represent the entire regulation in here so I can drill down, for example, PCI 7, 7.1 into 7.1.1 and look at what are the discrete controls that are required to satisfy that particular section, what subjects are in scope for that particular section, and expand these out and look at where do I have passing and failing scores that are contributing all the way up the chain to that overall PCI compliance view. So this provides a very nice drill down from a very high level overall 79% compliance score with PCI, taking that down into individual sections, individual commandments, breaking that down into the individual control scores that are contributing to that overall score. So back here to my home page then, I can also take a look at things from a more IT operations and systemic perspective. For example, we break things down into these resource types again, so I can look at how I'm doing in each one of those. We also allow you to build dynamic groups that really function as systems or collections of subjects. So I can take all of my external web apps, for example, and define a dynamic group that's going to capture all those, drill down into that, and again, look at compliance and risk metrics as it relates to just the subjects that are in that dynamic group. Now, let's say that these are uh, particularly interesting to me as an individual user. Um, I want to know my compliance on my external web apps uh, is a very important metric that I'm concerned with tracking. So what I'm going to do is create a custom dashboard view that's tailored just to me and the pieces of information I want to see. So I'm going to add that as a new custom view and I'll call it the demo view. So all I did was click add, type in the name, and we're good to go there. Now if I go back to my home page then, I could select here and drop down and go right to that demo view that I just created. And you can see that that specific dashboard item has been created and added to that for me. Now if I want to maybe take a look at that a little bit larger, I can widen it out, I can change the sizing on that, rearrange things however I want. So it gives me a lot of robust capabilities to really build out these custom views. There's an enormous amount of valuable metrics and information inside of the dashboard there. Being able to pull these dashboard views together on a custom basis like that really allows you to tailor those views for individual audiences such as auditors, executives, uh, and your IT operations folks as well. So then one last thing to point out here from a dashboard perspective. We talked before about the connectors we have into uh, technical security products such as patch management. And I wanted to highlight one of the things we're able to do with that is actually bring some of that specific operational security data out from those systems and represent them here in the dashboard. So there's a patch and remediation dashboard that feeds off of data from our patch and remediation system that we connect to. So I can drill down into that and I can look at what specific vendor reports, uh, vendors have put out patch reports, what's our overall compliance level with them, and really look at things from a very detailed patch perspective. What's very compelling about this is it allows me as a security person to bring my high level compliance and risk data together in one view with the very detailed specific technology views that allow me to understand at a very low level where we're starting to see uh, failures, in this case, for, uh, for example, with patch and remediation. With LaMention's compliance and IT risk management solution, your organization can improve its audit workflow, reduce the total cost of compliance, and improve security. LaMention Risk Manager allows you to move from an ad hoc approach to compliance to a continuous compliance approach that allows you to demonstrate your compliance posture at any time. Contact LaMention today to learn how our flexible, automated solution can provide real-time compliance with internal policies and external industry regulations.